السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق> بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد All thanks and praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may his peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger his family, his companions and those who follow them until the end of times Welcome to lesson number 197 of Tafsir al-Jalalain Alhamdulillah in our last lesson together we were able to explore verses 1 through 10 of Surah An-Nur. So inshallah today we're going to pick up right where we left off with verse number 11. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Inna alladhina jau bil ifki usbatum minkum La tahsabuhu sharran lakum بل هو خير لكم لكل امرئ منهم ما اكتسب من الإثم والذي تولى كبره منهم له عذاب عظيم لولا إن سمعتموه ظن المؤمنون والمؤمنات بأنفسهم خيرا وقالوا, وقالوا هذا إفق مبين لولا جاءوا عليه بأربعة شهداء فإذ لم يأتوا بالشهداء فأولئك عند الله هم الكاذبون ولولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته في الدنيا والآخرة لمسكم فيما أفضتم فيه عذاب عظيم قال الإمام جلال الدين السيئة قال الإمام جلال الدين المحلي رحمه الله تعالى إن الذين جاءوا بالإفك أسوأ الكذب على عائشة أم المؤمنين رضي الله عنها بقذفها عصبة منكم جماعة من المؤمنين قالت حسان بن ثابت وعبد الله بن أبي ومصطح وحمنة بنت جحش لا تحسبوه أيها المؤمنون غير العصبة شرا لكم بل هو خير لكم يأجركم الله به ويظهر براءة عائشة ومن أتى معها منه وهو صفوان فإنها قالت نعم. So here in this next set of verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dealing with a very difficult a very hurtful and personal incident that involved both the Prophet ﷺ and his family. Specifically, his beloved wife, the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha. And the incident that's being referred to here in these verses is known as Qissatul Ifki, which literally means the story of the lie. So this is the title given to the incident involving a false accusation against Aisha radiallahu anha that took place in the sixth year after Hijrah. Some hypocrites, they falsely accused Aisha radiallahu anha and they started spreading rumors that were then carried by a very few members of the Muslim community. And this false story, these accusations, caused the purest soul in human history a lot of suffering. And it made the Muslim community go through one of the hardest experiences in its short history. It left the hearts of the Prophet wasallam, his wife Aisha radiallahu anha, her father Abu Bakr radiallahu an, and his wife, as well as Safwan radiallahu an, for a whole month, subject to doubt, worry, and endless emotional pain. And this incident it caused unrest within the community for approximately one month until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these verses in defense of the honor of Aisha radiallahu anha, declaring her innocence. The enemies of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they tried every single possible thing to hurt him and to stop him. And among all of the things that they did, this is perhaps the most severe and the most emotionally challenging. I mean, just imagine 
they accused the most exalted, proficient, learned, and respected mother of the believers. So the passage, it refers to the entire episode, calling it the falsehood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself refers to it as al-ifq. And this incident, it has been recorded in most major hadith collections, including Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. So I'm going to relate the incident as it has been recorded in both Bukhari and Muslim. And then Imam al-Mahalli rahimahullah, he's also going to uh, narrate a portion of it. So Aisha radiallahu anha herself narrates that whenever Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam intended to set out on a journey, he cast lots among his wives and he took one with him in whose favor the lot was cast. Meaning when the Prophet ﷺ would go on a journey, then in order to be fair and equitable and just towards all of his wives, he would have them draw lots to see which one will accompany him on that journey. So they would draw lots and whoever's lot was drawn, then the Prophet ﷺ would take them along on that particular journey. So she says, Aisha radiallahu anha, it so happened that he cast lots among us while setting out for a particular battle. And this battle took place in the sixth year after Hijrah. It's known as Ghazwatu Banil Mustariq. Or also, it's known as Ghazwatul Muraysi. So she says, the lot was cast in my favor. <coughs> so I set out along with Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now just as a quick side note, this battle of Banu al-Mustaliq, it took place in the sixth year after Hijrah. And Banu al-Mustaliq was an Arab tribe that was allied with the Mushrikun of Mecca. And they participated in the battle of Uhud against the Muslims. And they were gathering resources and forces to attack the Muslims. So the Prophet ﷺ decided to go meet them in battle. Now Aisha radiallahu anha continues that this incident took place after the rules of hijab had been revealed. And I was being carried in a hodaj. Right? A hodaj is like this um, canopy type thing that is placed on the back of a camel. Right? It's like this canopy type thing is called a hodaj that is put on the back of a camel. So basically, um, perhaps you've seen this in some sort of movies or something like that. There's like a structure that might have like a, a flooring and it has like, you know, uh, poles on the side where people can lift it and carry it. And it's covered with perhaps drapes and curtains. And there's like a tent like structure. So she would sit inside of it and then they would lift this hodaj and put it onto the camel. So Aisha radiallahu anha says, I was carried in a hodaj and dismounted while still in it. And when Allah's Messenger وسلم, was through with his battle and he was returning home, we approached the city of Medina. Allah subhanahu, uh, Allah's Messenger وسلم, ordered us to proceed at night, to continue traveling at night until we reach Medina. And when the order of setting off was given, and they had set up camp for a while, and the Prophet وسلم, said, no, let's go and continue onwards to Medina. She says, when the order for continuing and going on on this journey was given, I walked till I was past the army. Meaning she went to go relieve herself to answer the call of nature. And after finishing, I returned to the camp to depart along with the others. But I realized that my necklace was missing. So I went back to look for my necklace and I was delayed because of that. And the people who used to carry me and place me on the camel in the hodaj, right? they came to my hodaj and they put it on the back of the camel, thinking that I was in it. Because at that time, women were light in weight and they were thin and lean and they didn't used to eat much. So those people did not feel the difference in the heaviness of the hodaj while lifting it. And they put it on top of the camel. And at that time, I was a young lady and they set the camel moving and proceeded on. So basically, she got left behind. Right? She inadvertently, accidentally got left behind. 
She, she says, I found my necklace after the army had gone. And when I came back to the camp, <coughs> I didn't find anyone. So I went to the place right where they had set up my camp and decided to wait there, thinking that they would discover my absence and come back looking for me. And while in that state, I felt sleepy, so I went to sleep. And Safwan ibn al-Mu'attil as-Sunami radiyallahu an. Right, Safwan ibn al-Mu'attil as-Sunami radiyallahu an was behind the army. Right, he was given the task of kind of traveling behind the army and picking up any items that they left behind, and then meeting up with them later on. So he says he was behind the army and he reached the place where I was sleeping in the morning. And when he saw the figure of someone sleeping, he approached me and he had seen me before the rules of hijab were revealed. So I woke up when I heard him saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. That truly we belong to Allah and truly to Him we will return. And then he made his camel kneel down he got down from his camel, he put his legs on the front legs of the camel so that it would be easier for me to get on. And then I got onto the camel and rode it. So Safwan radiallahu an set out walking, leading the camel by rope till we reached the army who had halted to take its rest at midday. Then whoever was meant for destruction fell into destruction. Meaning those individuals who were decreed to fall into destruction by accusing me and accusing Safwan fell into that. So some people then accused her falsely and they created this rumor. And the leader, the one who came up with this rumor, the one who initiated the entire incident was Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. Ra'sul Munafiqin. He was the leader of the hypocrites. She says, after that, we returned to Medina and I became ill for one month. While the people were spreading this lie, they were spreading this rumor. And at this time, she was still totally unaware. She had no idea what people were saying. And part of it is because she's sick and she's spending her time in home recovering. But she says, I was feeling during my sickness as if I were not receiving the usual kindness from the Prophet ﷺ, which I used to receive from him when I became sick. But he would still come and he would greet me and say, how is that girl? And I didn't know anything of what was happening. I had no idea of this false rumor that was being spread throughout the city. Then she says that I recovered from my ailment and I went out with Ummu Mistah to the Manasi. And to relieve ourselves and we used to not go to answer the call of nature except at night and that was before we had basically restrooms near our homes and this habit of ours was similar to the habit of the old Arabs in the open country so I and Umm Mistah went out walking right, heading towards these uh, to the area basically to the restrooms and Umm Mistah stumbled and she tripped over her long dress. And when she did so, she said, Ta'isa mistahun. May mistah be destroyed. May he be ruined. May he be cursed. So Aisha radiallahu anha is a bit shocked that why is a mother cursing her own child? So she said, Bi'sama qulti. Right? How evil is what you just said? How terrible is what you just said? Why are you insulting a man? who took part in the battle of Badr because Mislah was a companion radiallahu an not only is a companion he participated in the battle of Badr and those companions that participated in the battle of Badr they had a special rank they had a special status so she said ayhanta that's like a word of like endearment awalam tasma'i ma qal haven't you heard what he said about you and at that point, she told me about the rumor. So Aisha radiallahu anha continues, When I heard that, my sickness was aggravated. And when I returned home, Allah's Messenger sallallahu came to me. And after greeting, he said, كيف How's that girl? 
So I requested him to allow me to go to my parents' home. And I wanted to basically confirm what I heard. I wanted to verify if people are actually saying this. And if that this is this rumor is being spread about me. So Allah's Messenger وسلم, allowed me to go to my parents. And so I went to my parents' home and I asked my mother, what are the people talking about? What are they saying? So she said, Ya Bunayya, that, oh my beloved daughter, hawwini alayki, that don't worry about this too much. Fawallahi laqallama kanit imra'atun qat wadi'atun inda rajulin yuhibbuha walaha dharairu illa kathalna alayha. Now by Allah, you know, never is there a charming woman loved by her husband who has other wives, but the woman would forge false news about her. And he, her mom was trying to comfort her, like, don't worry about this, don't worry about what people are saying. It's a rumor, people are going to talk. Hawini alayki. Don't worry about it too much. So she said, Subhanallah, wa qad tahaddatha nasu bihada. And Aisha radiallahu anha was shocked that exalted is Allah. How perfect is Allah? Are, are people really talking about this? Are people really spreading this rumor about me? And she says that I was so disturbed by this that that night I kept on weeping. I kept on crying. And I could not sleep until the morning. And in the morning, Allah's Messenger وسلم, consulted with Ali ibn Abi Talib and Usama ibn Zayd. And he consulted them regarding about what he should do with me. That this rumor has been said and it's been spread. What should I do? Should I keep her? Should I confront? What should happen? Should I divorce her? So Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu an said that he knew of the good reputation of his wives and added that, O oh Allah's Messenger, keep your wife. For by Allah, we know nothing about her but good. Hum ahluk, right? They're your family. We don't know anything but good about your family. And Ali radiallahu an said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah hasn't imposed any restrictions upon you. And there are many other women besides her. Yet, you may ask the female slave who will tell you the truth. And he's referring to Barira, right? <clears throat> the freed slave of Aisha radiallahu anha. So then the Messenger of Allah consulted with her. That what should I do? So Barira, you know, radiallahu anha said, that by Allah, by the one who has sent you with the truth, I have never seen in her anything faulty. I have never seen any fault in her whatsoever. Except that she's young in age, who sometimes sleeps and leaves the dough for the goats to eat. And because of her young age, you know, she might make this... Uh, unintentional mistake and because of that you know some wealth or might some food might be lost but other than that I have never seen any fault in her and then on that day after consulting with his companions Allah's Messenger وسلم, ascended the pulpit right he, he went on to the member and he requested that somebody support him in punishing Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul so Allah's Apostle وسلم, said who will support me to punish him? The one who has hurt me by slandering the reputation of my family. By Allah, I know nothing about my family but good. And they have accused a person about whom I know nothing except good. And he never entered my house except in my company. Meaning, <coughs> he's declaring that he knows nothing but good about Aisha. And he knows nothing but good but about Safwan as well. So Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh radiallahu an got up and said, Ya Rasulullah, by Allah, I will relieve you from him. If that man is from the tribe of the Aws, then we will chop his head off. And if he is from our brothers, the Khazraj, then order us and we will fulfill your order. And then when uh, Sa'ad ibn Ubadah, who was from the Khazraj, heard that, and before this took place, there used to be a feud. Right, there used to be a feud bef between the Aws and Khazraj. So some of those old feelings came out. He got up and he said, By Allah, you've told a lie. You cannot kill him and you will never be able to kill him. 
So on that, um, Usaid got up and said to Sa'ad ibn Ubadah, By Allah, you're a liar. <clears throat> By Allah, we will kill him. And you're a hypocrite defending the hypocrites. And then it created this friction between the Aus and the Khazraj. And they were about to fight each other while the Prophet ﷺ was still on the member. So the Prophet ﷺ got down, right? He quieted them, he calmed down the situation, and you know, he settled it, he handled it. And he reminded them of who they are and what they're doing. Then Aisha radiallahu anha continues, on that day, I kept on weeping so much um, that you know my tears didn't stop and I couldn't go to sleep. And then in the morning, she says, my parents were with me. And I had been continuously crying for two days and nights. Till I thought that my liver would burst from weeping. That's an expression that I'm crying so much. So while they were sitting with me and I was weeping, an Ansari woman came to visit. And she asked permission to come in and I allowed her to come in and she sat down and she started weeping with me. And while we were in this state of emotional distress and crying and weeping, Allah's Messenger وسلم, came and sat down. And he had not sat down with me since the day of this accusation, since the day this rumor started. And revelation regarding my case had not come to him for a month. So then the Prophet ﷺ recited the tashahud. And then he said, <clears throat> Ya Aisha, I have been informed such and such about you. Ya Aisha, فَإِنَّهُ قَدْ بَلَغَنِي عَنْكِ كَذَا وَكَذَا That I have been informed or I have heard such and such about you. فَإِن كُنْتِ بَرِئَةً فَسَيُبَرِّئُكِ اللَّهُ If you are innocent, then Allah will soon reveal your innocence. Allah will soon declare it. Fasa yubarri'ukinnahu. Soon Allah will declare your innocence. Wa in kunti al mamti bi dhambin, fastaghfiri nah, wa tubi ilay. Fa in al abda ida atarafa bi dhambin, thumma tab, tab Allahu alay. But if you have committed a sin, then repent to Allah and seek His forgiveness. For when a person acknowledges their sin and asks Allah for forgiveness, <clears throat> Allah accepts their repentance. When Allah's Messenger وسلم, finished his speech, my tears ceased completely. And there remained not even a single drop. And I requested my father to reply to Allah's Messenger on my behalf. That, oh my beloved father, O oh Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, respond. Respond to the Prophet and he says, by Allah, I don't know what to say to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then she says, I said to my mother, speak to Allah's Messenger on my behalf. She said, by Allah, I do not know what to say to Allah's Apostle. Right? So then she says, I was a young girl and I didn't have much knowledge of the Quran. But I said, I know by Allah, that you have listened and you have heard what people are saying. And that thought has been planted in your minds. And you have taken it as the truth. Now, if I told you that I am innocent, and Allah knows that I'm innocent, you will not believe me. And if I confessed, confess to you falsely that I'm guilty, and Allah knows that I'm innocent, you will believe me. By Allah, I don't compare my situation with you except to the situation of Yusuf, Yusuf's salam's father who said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ اللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تصفون. So for me, patience is most fitting against that which you claim and Allah alone is the one whose help is sought. صَبْرٌ جميل. Patience is beautiful. Wallahu al musta'an. Right, then I turned to the other side of my bed, hoping that Allah would prove my innocence. And by Allah, 
I never thought that Allah would reveal divine inspiration in my case as I considered myself too inferior to be spoken about in the Quran. And I had hoped that Allah's Messenger وسلم, might receive a dream in which Allah would prove my innocence. But by Allah, Allah's Messenger وسلم, had not got up and nobody had left the house before Wahi came to him. So there overtook him the same state which used to overtake him when he used to receive Wahi. And he was sweating so much that the drops of the sweat were dropping like pearls even though it was a cold wintry day. Because revelation would be heavy upon the Prophet right? And the heaviness would have a physical manifestation in the form of the Prophet وسلم, perspiring. And when that state of Allah's Messenger was over, he was smiling. And the first thing he said was, Abshiri ya Aisha, amma Allahu faqad barra'aki. That, O oh Aisha, abshiri, rejoice, be happy, right? Receive this glad tiding. Amma Allahu faqad barra'aki, for Allah has declared your innocence. So my mother told me to go to Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I said, by Allah. I will not go to him <coughs> and I will only thank Allah. So Allah revealed this set of verses, verses 11 to 20 of Surah An-Nur. That, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عُسْبَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ Indeed, those who came up without outrageous slander are a group of you. It was a group from among you that concocted the lie. So this set of verses, verses 11 to 20, were revealed at this time. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the declaration of my innocence, Abu Bakr, my father radiallahu anhu, who used to give money to Mislah to support him, because Mislah was related to him. He says, by Allah, I will never support Mislah with anything because of what he said about Aisha. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verse number 22, which we will come upon and we'll get to that inshaAllah. Right? So here in verse number 11, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is introducing this incident of al-ifk. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عُسْبَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ Indeed, those who concocted those who fabricated this lie, those who came up with this outrageous slander and rumor, usbatum minkum, are a group from among you. La tahsabuhu sharral lakum. Don't think that this is bad for you. Bal huwa khairul lakum. Rather, it's good for you. Li kullim ri'im minhum maktasab min al ithm. They will be punished, each according to their share of the sin. وَالَّذِي تَوَلَّى كِبْرَهُ مِنْهُمْ لَهُ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And as for their mastermind, he will suffer a severe punishment. Right? Another translation reads, It was a group from among you that concocted the lie. Don't consider it a bad thing for you. It was a good thing. And every one of them will be charged with the sin they earned. And he who took the greatest part in it will have a painful punishment. So here, Imam Al-Mahalli rahimullah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ Indeed, those who came with the lie. And then he says, what is Al-Ifq? He says, Al-Ifq is أَسْوَ الْكَذِبِ The most evil lie, the worst type of lie. The slanderous accusation, this rumor against Aisha, عَلَىٰ عَائِشَةَ أُمِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ right, Against Aisha, the mother of the believers رضي الله عنها بِقَذْفِهَا By accusing her. Right, by accusing her. عُسْبَةٌ um, مِّنْكُمْ Is a group from among you. جَمَاعَةٌ مِّنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ It's a group of believers. And then Imam Mahalli could have been a little bit more precise in his wording. Because then he member, mentions who these usba were. That who were some of the major players in spreading this rumor throughout Medina. 
One of them was Hassan ibn Thabit radiyallahu anhu, a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But he fell into this mistake. Right? He fell into making this mistake based off of his poor judgment or whatever. He fell into this mistake. He fell into this sin. Wa Abdullah ibn Ubay, and Abdullah ibn Ubay was a munafiq. Not only was a munafiq, he was Rasul munafiqin. He was a leader of the hypocrites, and that's why I said that Imam Mahalli could have been a little bit more precise in his wording. That it wasn't just a group of believers. I mean, some of those that were involved in spreading the rumor were definitely believers. And they committed a sin. They made a mistake. But Abdullah ibn Ubay, he was malicious. His intent was malicious. He was a hypocrite. He did it to intentionally cause harm to the Prophet and to his family. Mistahun, which is uh, the relative of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Wahamnatu bintu Jahsh. And Hamnatu bintu Jahshin radiallahu anha. La tahsibuhu. Here Imam al Mahalli is using a different qira'a. He goes with the verb hasiba yahsibu with a kasra on the scene. Whereas we have tahsibuhu with a fatha on the scene. It's the same meaning, it's the same verb. It's just two different ways of pronouncing it. So, ayyuha al mu'minun ghayr al usba. The O believers that aren't part of the group that's spreading this rumor, don't think that this is something bad for you. بَلْ هُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Rather, this incident and this rumor is something good for you because there's several lessons in it. There's several lessons for the community. In it. It's a way of nurturing and educating and molding the morals and the character of the community. يَأْجُرُكُمُ اللَّهُ بِي And through this trial, and through this incident, Allah will reward you. So in reality, it's khair. In reality, it's something good. So don't think that this is bad for you. Rather, it's good for you. Allah will reward you through it. وَيُظْهِرُ بَرَاءَةَ Aisha, And he will um, display, make apparent, and he will um, declare the innocence of Aisha radiallahu anha وَمَنْ أَتَى مَعَهَا And the one who uh, brought her, which is Safwan. وَهُوَ Safwan radiallahu an فَإِنَّهَا قَالَتْ Because she said. Now here Imam al-Mahalli is narrating a portion of the hadith that just, we just covered uh, before we started. So فَإِنَّهَا قَالَتْ كُنْتُ مَعَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ فِي غَزْوَةٍ بَعْدَمَا أُنزِلَ الْحِجَامِ فَفَرَغَ مِنْهَا right. I was with the Prophet وسلم, on an expedition and as we covered this was the expedition of Bani Al-Mustaniq which is also known as Al-Muraysi' which took place in the sixth year after Hijrah بَعْدَمَا أُنزِلَ الْحِجَامِ and this expedition took place after the rules of Hijab had been revealed فَفَرَغَ مِنْهَا so he completed the expedition وَرَجَعَ and was on his way back وَدَنَا مِنَ الْمَدِينَةِ and they got close to Medina وَآذَنَ بِالرَّحِيلِ لَيْلَةً and he <coughs> gave permission and he announced بِالرَّحِيل and he announced that we are traveling at night that we are going to continue to travel at night so we can get to Medina sooner and quicker فَمَشَيْتُ وَقَضَيْتُ شَأْنِ so I walked, meaning I walked away from the camp and I fulfilled my need, meaning I relieved myself. And then I turned back to return to the camp. And I noticed that my necklace had broken and fallen off. And then he highlights that the word iqt huwa bi muhmala al qilana. It's referring to something that's worn around the neck, yani a necklace. So I went back looking for it and searching for it. And the people then lifted my hawdaj. And then he clarifies that a hawdaj is something that you ride in. Right? Something that you ride in that's placed on top of the camel. Right? So ala ba'iri. So they lifted my hawdaj. Onto my camel, yahsibunani fihi, thinking that I was in it. 
And the reason why they thought I was in it, she explains. Because women at that time were very light. They didn't weigh much. They only used to eat a little bit of food. He says, That they only used to eat a little bit of food at that time. So they were very light in terms of their weight. So they didn't notice that I wasn't inside. So they unknowingly, and he put my hodaj on my camel, thinking that I was in it. She continues that I found my necklace, but I returned after they had already set off. I returned after the army had left. So I went and sat down in the place that I was before. And he where they had set up my part of the camp, I went back there and I sat back down there. And I thought that the people would figure out that I'm missing. And then they would come back to me. And then my eyes overpowered me, meaning I became sleepy. So I went to sleep. Right, she says, so I went to sleep, and she continues to explain that Safwan, right, had stayed behind the army. Right, he, he had set up camp at the end of the night to rest, and then he traveled from that place, and he ended up where I was. And he saw the figure of a sleeping person, a shakhsahu, and he saw the figure from a distance. And he recognized me when he saw me because he used to see me before hijab. So he knew what I looked like. And I woke up with him saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ina when he recognized me. That that's how I woke up. I woke up after hearing him say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. فخمرت وجهي بجلباب. So I covered my face with my jilbab. أي غطيته بالملاءتي. And I covered it like with a like niqab type thing. I covered it. والله ما كلمني بكلمة. And by Allah, he did not speak even one word to me. ولا سمعت منه كلمة غير استرجاعه. And I didn't hear a word from him except. Him saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, hina anakha rahilatahu. Right? When he um, made his camel sit down, wa wati'a ala yadiha, and then he basically stepped on its feet so it'd be easier for me to get on it, farakibtuha. And I mounted his camel. Fantalaka yakudu bi arahila. So he started, he set off, right, driving the camel. And he walking in front of the camel and pulling it along. Right. So until we returned to the army, right, until we got to the army or reached the army, and they had set up camp and he, uh, during the extreme heat. And when they would travel and it would be really hot, they would take a break. From the extreme heat. <coughs> and then afterwards, who, uh, whoever was destroyed was destroyed regarding me. And whoever then spread the rumor, spread the rumor, and they basically destroyed themselves. And the one who took the greatest part in it, right? The one who took the greatest part. In actually concocting the lie and, and making this rumor and then playing a major role in spreading it was Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul 
رَأْسُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ انتهى قولها right, That is the end of her statement رواه الشيخان And this has been narrated by both Shaykhs, yani Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim رَحِمَهُمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى قَالَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ قَالَ تَعَالَى لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ اَيْ عَلَيْهِ مَكْتَسَبَ مِنَ الْإِثْمِ فِي ذَلِكِ وَالَّذِي تَوَلَّى كِبْرَهُ مِنْهُمْ اَيْ تَحَمَّلَ مُعْظَمَهُ فَبَدَأَ بِالْخَوْضِ فِيهِ وَأَشَاعَهُ وَهُوَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ أُبَيِّنْ لَهُ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ هُوَ النَّارُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَوْلَا هَلَّا إِذْ حِينَ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ اَيْ ظَنَّ بَعْضُهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ خَيْرًا وَقَالُوا هَذَا إِفْكٌ مُبِينٌ كذب بين فيه التفات عن الخطاب أي ظننتم أيها العصبة وقلتم So here Imam al-Mahalli or first and foremost Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لكل امرئ منهم مكتسب من الإثم Every person from that group that was involved in spreading this lie and rumor about Aisha رضي الله عنها and Safwan رضي الله عنه لكل امرئ منهم for each of them مكتسب من الإثم is what they earn in terms of sin every one of them will be charged with the sin they have earned so everyone will get the sin that they deserved for spreading this rumor والذي تولى كبره and the one who took the greatest part in it among them له عذاب عظيم will have a painful punishment. So, لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ قَالَ تَعَانَ Allah said, لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مِنْهُمْ For every individual among them, a عَلَيْهِ meaning upon them, مَكْتَسَبَ مِنَ الْإِثَمْ is what they earned in terms of sin, فِي ذَلِكَ for spreading that rumor. وَالَّذِي تَوَلَّى كِبْرَهُ مِنْهُمْ and the one who took the greatest part in it from among them, a تَحَمَّلَ مُعْظَمَهُ meaning the one who Yani, uh, undertook most of it فَبَدَأَ بِالْخَوْضِ فِيهِ So he's the one who actually started speaking about it So he's the one who started the rumor وَأَشَاعَهُ and spread it وَهُوَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ أُبَيْ And he is عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ أُبَيْ لَهُ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ For him is a painful punishment هُوَ النَّابُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ And that is the fire in the hereafter because he was a hypocrite لَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ خَيْرًا If only the believing men and women had thought well of one another when you heard this rumor وَقَالُوا and said this is clearly a lie this is a clear outrageous lie and when you heard the lie why did believing men and women not think well of their own people and declare this is obviously a lie. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining what the response of the community should have been. And this is again nurturing and training all uh, believing communities. That when this type of rumor is said, we should close our ears and not even listen to it. We should only think good of each other, of believers. Because a believer will not do such a thing. So, لَوْلَا يَعْنِي هَلَّا إِذْ حِينَ سَمِعْتُمُهُ That when you heard this ifk, when you heard this horrendous lie, when you heard this rumor, right? why didn't the believers think well of each other? Right? ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ خَيْرًا Why didn't they think good of each other? أَيْظَنَّ بَعْضُهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ خَيْرًا وَقَالُوا And why didn't they say هَذَا إِفْكٌ مُبِينٌ This is a open, clear, outrageous lie. كَذِبٌ بَيِّنٌ This is a clear lie. And in it he says that there's some بَلَاغَ going here. That فِيهِ الْتِفَاتٌ عَنِ الْخِطَانِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is transitioning and moving from addressing them in the second person to the third person. ظَنَنْتُمْ أَيُّهَا الْعُسْبَ وَقُلْتُمْ right, So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again is clarifying what their 
response should have been, what their attitude should have been. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إذ تلقونه بألسنتكم وتقولون بأفواهكم ما ليس لكم به علم وتحسبونه حينا وهو عند الله عظيم ولولا إذ سمعتموه قلتم ما يكون لنا أن نتكلم بهذا سبحانك هذا بهتان عظيم يعذكم الله أن تعودوا لمثله أبدا يعذكم الله أن تعودوا لمثله أبدا إن كنتم مؤمنين ويبين الله لكم الآيات والله عليم حكيم إن الذين يحبون أن تشيع الفاحشة في الذين آمنوا لهم عذاب أليم لهم عذاب أليم في الدنيا والآخرة والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون ولولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته وأن الله رؤوف رحيم قال رحمه الله لولا هل لا جاء أي العسبة عليه بأربعة شهداء شاهدوه فإذا لم يأتوا بالشهداء فأولئك عند الله أي في حكمه هم الكاذبون فيه ولولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته في الدنيا والآخرة لمسكم فيما أفضتم فيه أيها العسبة أي خط عذاب عظيم في الآخرة إذ تنقونه بألسنتكم أي يرويه بعضكم عن بعض وحذف من الفعل إحدى التائين وإذ منصوب بمسكم أو بأفضتم وتقولون بأفواهكم ما ليس لكم به علم وتحسبونه هينا لا إثم فيه وهو عند الله عظيم في الإثم So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues right, criticizing how the community handled this particular incident particularly those who took part in spreading this rumor why didn't they produce four witnesses and why did the accusers not bring four witnesses now since they have failed to produce witnesses they are truly liars in the sight of Allah. And why did the accusers not bring four witnesses? If they cannot produce such witnesses, they are the liars in Allah's eyes. So, Lola, Imam al Mahalli says, means halla. You know, why didn't they? Ja'u, ay al usbatu alayhi bi arba'ati shuhada shahaduhu. Why didn't they bring four witnesses upon that? Any four witnesses who witnessed this act, this, this rumor that they're speaking about. So why did they not produce four witnesses? Who? Al-Usba, this group. Those that were involved in spreading this particular rumor. فَإِذْ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بِالشُّهَدَى Now, since they have not brought four witnesses, فَأُولَئِكَ Then they, إِنَّ اللَّهِ أَيْفِي حُكْمِهِ According to the rule of Allah, هُمُ الْكَاذِبُونَ فِيهِ Are the liars regarding it. وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ لَمَسَّكُمْ فِي مَا أَفَضْتُمْ فِيهِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Had it not been for Allah's grace and mercy upon you in this world and the next, you would have certainly been touched with a great punishment for what you indulged in. So, وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ If it weren't for the grace of Allah and His mercy, فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ In this world and the next, لَمَسَّكُمْ فِي مَا أَفَضْتُمْ فِيهِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ A great punishment would have afflicted you because of what you indulged in. أَيُّهَا الْعُسْبَةِ The O group, أَيْ خُطُّمْ Because of what you indulged in, in terms of 
speaking about this and spreading this rumor. Adabun Adim, you would have been afflicted with a huge punishment, with a painful punishment, fil akhirah, in the hereafter. Why? If tanakona hu bi al sinatikum, wa taquluna bi afwahikum ma laysa nakum bihi in, wa tahsabuna hu hayina. Because you passed it from one tongue to the other and said with your mouths what you have no knowledge of, considering it to be light, considering it to be trivial. But to Allah, it was very serious. Right? Right. Why would you have received that great, severe torment and punishment? Because you talaqawnahu bi alsinatikum, you spread it with your tongues. Ayyarwihi baadukum an baadin. You were narrating it from each other. You were spreading it amongst yourselves. Wa hudi fa min alfaali ihda taain. He highlights that talaqawnahu is actually tatalaqawnahu, and one of the taz has been omitted. And the word id is mansub because of masakum or because of afatum. Wa taqulun bi afwahikum ma leesa lakum bihi in. And you are saying with your mouths, right? You are speaking with your mouths what you have no knowledge of. And you consider it to be trivial. <coughs> it's not a big deal. There's no sin in this. <laughs> but according to Allah, it's a grave matter. It's a serious matter. <laughs> in sin. It's very sinful. The fact that you even heard this rumor. And then on top of that, you spread it. It is a very serious, a very grave matter. قَالَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ وَلَوْ لَا هَلَّا إِذْ حِينَ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ قُلْتُمْ مَا يَكُونُ مَا يَنْبَغِي لَنَا أَمْ نَتَكَلَّمَ بِهَذَا سُبْحَانَكْ هُوَ لِلتَّعَجُّبِ هُنَا هَذَا بُهْتَانٌ كَذِبٌ عَظِيمٌ يعذكم الله ينهاكم أن تعودوا لمثله أبدا إن كنتم مؤمنين تتعذون بذلك ويبين الله لكم الآيات في الأمر والنهي والله عليم بما يأمر به وينهى عن حكيم فيه الله سبحانه وتعالى is continuing to again nurture and train and educate the Muslim community that you should not have engaged or indulged this rumor should have totally ignored it. You should have defended the honor of the Prophet's wife and his family and his companion. وَلَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ قُلْتُمْ مَا يَكُونُ لَنَا أَن نَتَكَلَّمَ بِهَذَا When you heard the lie, why did you not say, it is not appropriate for us to speak about this? Subhanak, Glory be to Allah. This is a monstrous slander. This is a heinous, huge slander. So, walawla meaning halla. إِذْ حِينَ سَمِعْتُمُهُ That when you heard this, why didn't you say, مَا يَكُونُ مَا يَنْبَغِي لَنَا It is not appropriate, it is not befitting for us أَن نَتَكَلَّمَ بِهَذَا To even speak this. Why didn't you say that? That's what you should have done. That should have been your response. When you heard this rumor, you should have said, it is not befitting for us, it is not appropriate for us to even speak this. Subhanak, right? It means glory to Allah, how perfect is Allah, exalted is He. But huwa lit-ta'ajjubi huna. Here it's for expressing amazement and surprise and wonder. Right? God, like God forbid. Hada buhtanun kadibun azimun. This is a huge lie. This is a huge slander. Allah forbids you from ever doing something like this again. In kuntum mu'minin, if you are true believers. Allah warns you never to do anything like this again if you are true believers. A very severe language from Allah. يَعِذُكُمُ Allah. Imam al-Mahalli clarifies rahimullah means yanhakum. Allah prohibits you. Allah forbids you. أن تعودوا لمثله أبدا. Allah forbids you from ever doing something like this again. In kuntum mu'minin, if you truly believe in Allah, 
تتعدون بذلك you will take heed with that you will accept that idha you will accept that warning and, and you will be reminded and mindful وَيُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ And Allah makes His commandments clear to you. <coughs> Allah is the all-knowing, the all-wise. وَيُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ Allah makes His signs, He makes His verses clear to you. فِي الْأَمْرِ وَالنَّهِي Regarding commands and prohibitions, meaning His commandments. Allah makes His commandments absolutely clear to you. وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمُ And Allah is all-knowing. بِمَا يَأْمُرُ بِهِ وَيَنْهَى عَنْ and part of his all-knowing and an infinite knowledge is that he knows exactly what he's commanding you to do and he knows exactly what he's prohibiting you from. Hakimun fihi, and he is all wise in that, commanding and prohibiting. And there's deep divine wisdom in every single commandment and every single prohibition. Qala rahimahullah, Inna al-ladheena yuhibboona an tashia al-fahishatu bil-nisani fi al-ladheena amanu بنسبتها إليهم وهم العصبة لهم عذاب أليم في الدنيا بالحد للقذف والآخرة بالنار لحق الله والله يعلم انتفاءها عنهم وأنتم أيها العصبة لا تعلمون وجودها فيهم ولولا فضل الله عليكم أيها العصبة ورحمة ورحمتهم وأن الله رؤوف رحيم بكم لعاجلكم بالعقوبة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحِبُّونَ أَن تَشِيعَ الْفَاحِشَةً فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Indeed, those who love to see indecency spread among the believers will suffer a painful punishment in this world and the next. Allah knows and you don't know. So truly those who love for indecency, الْفَاحِشَةً Billisan, particularly with the tongue. Antashia. That they love to see indecency spread. Filladina amanu among those who have belief. Binisbatiha ilahim by attributing it to them. Wahumul Usba. And Imam Mahali says this verse is regarding and, and speaking specifically about the group that was involved in spreading the rumor. But it can also be more general. Anyone who has this quality, anyone who likes to see indecency. Spread among the believers. لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ They will receive a painful punishment in this world and the next. How in this world? بِالْحَدِّ لِلْقَذَفِ Because they will receive the had punishment for accusing someone of zina without having proof. وَالْآخِرَةِ And in the hereafter, بِالْنَارِ right, They will receive a painful punishment in the hereafter with fire because of the right of God. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ إِنْتِثَاهَا أَعَنْهُمْ And Allah knows that this fahisha has nothing to do with the believers. وَأَنْتُمْ أَيُّهَا الْعُسْبَ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And you, O group of people involved in this rumor and spreading it, don't know that it was even present in them. وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ رَأُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ Meaning, had it not been for Allah's grace and mercy, and had Allah not been ever gracious and most merciful, you would have definitely suffered. وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ If it weren't for Allah's grace upon you, أَيُّهَا الْعُسْبَةِ O group involved in spreading this rumor, like Mistah and uh, Hamna and uh, Hassan ibn Thabit, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَجْمَعِينَ They're companions of the Prophet Wasallam, And his mercy, and if it weren't for the fact that Allah is ra'ufun, compassionate, Rahim and very merciful bikum la ajalakum bil uquba. He would have hastened the punishment with you. But he allowed you to repent and do tawbah and seek forgiveness. So we are out of time for today. So we'll stop here. Alhamdulillah, we have reached till the end of verse number 20. May Allah accept this effort of ours. May He place it on our scale of good deeds on the Day of Judgment. May Allah make this a means of strengthening our understanding of the Quran. May Allah make all of us amongst Ahlul Qur'an al-ladhina hum ahlullahi wa khasatu wa sallina humma ala nabiyyina maulana muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam jazakumullahu khayran wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi